Hey guys, um, welcome back. A review today of the mini sized uh, mini copter or a mini quad, a 250 size quad from Hobby King. Uh, this quad here I'm going to review is, let's see if I can film it, this frame. Uh, it's a plastic frame from uh, Hobby King that is really, really cheap, and I thought it would be total crap. Uh, it actually isn't that crappy, so let's go through how it works and what it's all about today. Uh, this will be a series of two, because in this first video I'm just going to go through the craft itself, and in the second episode I will go through uh, some performance and uh, how it flies and also mount some really, really... Uh, light FPV gear on it so let's see this is the one that I have bought uh, I bought the long version frame because I thought it look, looked a little bit better and had a little bit more space for mounting stuff um, I never actually used that part uh, so let's see uh, as you can see it also have legs the plastic ones that you can see there, I have not used them either. This one in particular cost 13.76 euro. I think the one without the extension kit is, I mean, it's below 10 euro or something like that. I don't know. It's really, really cheap. So let's go to the frame itself. Um, first of all, there is some things to note about or look into when you are buying at, at least plastic frames and that's the mounting holes. Uh, the thing is that the plastic needs to be a little bit thicker than both glass fiber and carbon. So that means that the holes will most likely be off or even too large or too small. In this case the holes are aligned correctly and all that so that's fine but the holes are too big for the small screws that generally comes with 1804 or 1806 motors. Uh, Hobby King actually recommends even smaller motors to start with. Uh, I do not recommend that. I would say 1806 is a perfect motor for this rather lightweight frame. Um, in this specific test I have been using, let's see here, we can show you the mystery motors uh, 2300 kV 1806 I would say they are the same as the Emacs 1806 and many many other turn G or whatever you want to say several names um, difference between those and the Emacs is actually they are some differences let's pick a motor here if I can get one uh, outside you will not see much difference but if you measure them you will see that the shaft position and all that is different for I mean it differs just half a millimeter so there are small differences uh, no review of that today so we'll skip that anyways what you have to do is I actually used some uh, metal pieces that I got with some other motors and use them as uh, some kind of um, yeah, just to have between the plastic and the, uh, the, the the screws and the motors itself just to make sure that the screws would not go through the plastic because I mean the plastic was the holes in the plastic was the same size as the head of the screw uh, and at the same time you can see that I could only use two of the screws and that's because those are not made to fit um, those motors. They are made to fit the uh, bigger ones. Uh, this one is actually loose as well, so it's time to screw it back again. I think it is this motor that I actually have to dismount last time because I crashed it hard. So I'm going to dismount it and add some new Loctite and add it again. That's it. Um, the ESCs I'm using is some old junky ESCs that I had lying around that actually burned, that the 5 volt circuit is burnt. So you can see that here, let's see if I can get some focus, it's hard, uh, the 5 volt circuit is missing. Uh, 
and that's the one here. I actually dissolve it to remove it, otherwise it will just short circuit it totally. So they are working. This one here still have a hole in the 5 volt circuit, but it do deliver 5 volts, so it is working. Yeah, I know it's not good to do that, but it is working and it was cheap. That's the main thing. Um, I'm having the battery on the underside. It's both good and bad. I like it because then I don't get anything more on the up uh, on the um, top. But at the same time, it's not protected when you're flying really, really low. So you will be able to hit it. And at the same time, as you can see, I don't have the legs on the bottom here. It should be the plastic legs here. So I don't have them. And that even creates more issue with having the battery on the bottom. But at the same time, if you add a battery, it doesn't take up much height, so that is working fine. Um, I had some old Multiwii 2.5 boards, so I added that one inside here. It's just added with some um, double-sided tape, so it's actually not... Yeah, it sits pretty fair at the moment. I have to file down the corners of the board to fit inside the mounting holes that they supposed to have like KK2 or CC3D or any other board like that. Um, but it works and I added the frame on top. The receiver I'm using is a small Volkera, the smallest one they have. Uh, it's really a crap receiver but it works to, to this frame and I'm not flying that far away. It's sitting on the outside so it's not that protected and I would actually would like to have smaller connectors here that isn't building that much in the height uh, but at the same time it's not that much higher than the protector for the um, uh, multi-wheel itself that's it i like it so far uh, the rigidity of the frame it's a little bit soft but i mean it's not softer than actual cheap carbon frame like this one here the ebay variant that you can see so it's actually pretty good uh, I'm running 5x3 props on it now, and that's really nice, it works perfectly, but when I'm going to the FPV gear, I will be changing to 5.4, and that will give me some extra lift, and it's noticeable, especially when you have the FPV gear mounted. If you like, this is 6 inch props, as you can see, they will fit, so you can be running 6 inch as well, so for the most out of it, if you mount 1806, you could go up to 6.3 or 6.4. Uh, the motor is it's itself running 6.4. I do not recommend it because it will be drawing 150 watts instead of like 100 watts. And so you will overload both the ECs and the motors. Do not, I do not recommend it at all. Uh, but I mean, if you go for 22.04 or 22.06 that actually can handle it, or any other 1806 that can handle it, go for it. And you'll get a really, really quick machine. Um, that's it f uh, about that when it comes to the weight I know I, I have a scale here and everyone wants to know how much does it really weigh uh, how much does it really weigh compared to another China copy of the machine um, how much does the actual equipment that I didn't mount weigh I mean this is quite a lot of stuff as well and I mean, how much does it actually weigh compared to the QAV250, for instance? Um, the thing is, if we take this one, let's add start the scale. You can see it there. The frame empty without batteries, it weighs 258 grams. That's really, really light. Really light. Let's take this one here. 309 grams. Yes, I have this one extra on it. Let's remove it. 300 grams. So, if we compare it here again, that's 44 gram extra for going from plastic to carbon frame. Um, that's one thing to note. I mean, it's is is significant lighter so how about the size what's the difference in the size let's see if we can put them up together here um, as you can see 
it's wider, firstly. Um, sorry, the other frame is wider. The plastic uh, Hobby King frame is actually a little bit um, less wide than this one. And it actually is longer instead. So <laughs> it's a little bit different, but this is it depends on how this frame is created here. Compared to the QRV 250, it's kind of the same size. So it doesn't differ much at all. Uh, and to save some more weight, I most likely could have changed those to just normal other screws or something like that. And I would save some grams. Let's see how much I would save. I should have more of those. Here they are. So let's measure them. Ah, uh, zero grams. Let's see if we can get something to note there. They are aluminum, so you won't see it. It says... Uh, now it's just playing with me. I don't know what to do now. Series again. Two of them. Three gram. Five. It's a little bit hard to measure, actually, but... I mean, it should be a couple of grams at least, you could be able to save. They are fairly light, so no big deal there. Um, so, the extra gear that I didn't mount, how much do that weigh? 64 grams. So if you mount that, it actually become heavier than the carbon frame. So, that's where you save the weight. Skip those parts, you really don't need them. I haven't needed them yet, and I will not need them. So, the next part I will be doing... I mean, it flies really, really well. Uh, it's fast, it's small, it works. I have crashed it several times, and it still works. Uh, and I crashed it hard, because I'm testing out some old firmwares, and it's not working properly, so... Uh, but I will be adding, in the review, or in the next review, some FPV gear. As you can see here, I have some parts here, I have some cameras, and I have some transmitters. I will be using this kind of transmitter, it's not the most lightweight one. So, if we weigh that up, it's 31 gram, some cables. The big save, where you can save big money here, I mean you can save big money on this, uh, big weight on this one as well, but you can save even more on the cameras. This is kind of a standard camera. It's actually Sony. Let's see if I can zoom it in a little bit. 700 TV lines. It's mostly the same as the 600 as well in the weight. And this one is fairly... It's heavy. It's really, really heavy. Let's see if we can get done. 45 grams for a damn camera. And that's because of the casing. But, I mean, if, if you add it on this one, you need a casing to protect it. So... Two other alternatives, a medium one and a big, really, really small one. This one here, 11 gram. That's nice. It's the same kind of camera as the Fast Shark uses, but this one is actually a fake one, but it produces fairly good image. And mounting it here, let's see if we can hold it down. It would look really, really nice, and I mean, it will be kind of protected because it doesn't uh, stick out in the front. Uh, the, the, the big thing here would be mounting this part. Where should you mount that? Um, most likely I will be removing the receiver and changing spot on that one because that one is small. I might even be able to squeeze it in, in somewhere between here and then I move this one in the back end instead. Of course I will be dissolving this part here to actually get cables on there directly to save weight. But we have one third camera. This small, small, small guy from Hobby King. I will actually be doing a review of this camera later on because it's interesting. It's small. Do it produce the same kind of picture as the bigger ones or not? But when it comes to the weight, here's what's interesting. Five gram. So compared to this middle one, 11 versus 5 grams. I would actually be saving 6 more grams. And if I mount this one here, I would have plenty of space of mounting the receiver or the transmitter for the video or anything else like that. 
So most likely I will be using this one as testing purposes. Let's see. Um, that's mainly it for this time. Um, short review. I like the frame. I, I didn't think I would like it, but I do like it. It's fairly lightweight and all that. Oh, and I forgot to wait something. Uh, if we add everything up on the same time, camera, FPV gear, transmitter, I'm missing some cables, of course. But look here 293 grams. That's light. 293. If we go up here and pick one, China frame, big Sony, 600 or 700 TV lines with the, the normal wide lens, uh, same transmitter, just a normal antenna, nothing really extra. It has the legs just strapped into the side because it's going to be delivered like that. But I mean, if you're running it with Mobius and everything like that, it would have that weight. So. Just below 300 gram. Let's see what this one have. 379 gram. So you actually saving 79 gram. That's fairly good. I would say. I mean, this one, this frame is good. It is. It is a really good frame. It's. I mean, it's. The arms are weak and stuff like that. People say I have not broken any arms yet, but I will. But I have spare arms lying around, so that's not a big issue. This one, it's light. It's really, really, really cheap. I mean, I think it is like seven or eight dollar uh, euros. I don't think it's much more. So I would give it a thumbs up. And in next video, I will be re reviewing uh, the performance outside and show you when I'm actually flying it and show you how easily you can do flips just one meter above the ground and I mean it's a simple small machine so thank you for today uh, please comment subscribe like I mean if you want to see anything special let me know um, I have tons of things that need to be looked into for instance the fly sky here as you can see it is open why you say this one only have two button switches two way switches i'm going to add a three way switch i so that will be coming up as well i also have some interesting new charger that i'm going to test compared to the imax um, i also have bought these new screens from ebay it's fairly interesting screen as well. It have a lot of stuff. It doesn't have DVR. You cannot record anything, so that's boring. But it had diversity, and it have uh, diverse. It have uh, two channel input, so it, you can actually output every, both channels into two different channels out. So that's for next as well. But for now, thank you. And as I said, subscribe, comment, like. Let me know what you think. Thank you for today. Bye.